domain um, uh, with machine learning uh, in order to deliver improved text analytics. The contextual knowledge of the problem domain uh, is the uh, property of the uh, computational linguistics that uh, study how uh, the um, language is used in order to interpret text. And obviously machine learning is the training that can be performed on text in order to do particular classification. Um, following on from that, because we started to work with machine learning prior to the development of large language models, we are going to see how we manage to adapt uh, transformer technology or large language models in order to deliver uh, knowledge-informed artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence that um, relies primarily on statistical techniques can be fused with domain knowledge in order to improve its classification accuracy. The use case that we are going to um, 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 use in today's presentation to demonstrate how this can be, uh, how this is feasible uh, and, and useful is financial analytics. So we are going to um, work with financial documents and use the text uh, used within these financial documents in order to infer uh, whether, for example, particular conditions are uh, suitable for uh, financial investment. And I'm going to finish with uh, presenting the experimental results of our work, the initial experimental results of our work. Right. So uh, there is no doubt that we live in the age of AI and it's impacting uh, every aspect of, um, of our life. Uh, it's, it's impacting already the way that we, uh, we live, the way we work, it's impacting the economy. And it's predicted uh, by the UK government that by the year 2030, 30% 30 of the jobs uh, can potentially be automated by uh, artificial intelligence or AI. Various aspects of uh, um, jobs can be automated by uh, AI or artificial intelligence. Now, within academia, within the uh, higher education um, 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 context, uh, this uh, also has um, made us think about the way that we deliver uh, our teaching to uh, the um, uh, the students. The students now use um, um, generative AI and use AI uh, um, in their work. And it also made us think about the way that we deliver our courses and their relevance, if you like, to uh, the students, uh, the students' learning. However, in the NLP community, we look at this as kind of glass uh, half full because the um, uh, research that is done uh, to deliver machine learning within the context of um, um, transforming technologies um, is directly related to NLP or natural language processing. Right, so uh, let me give you some background on transformer technology and how they were um, uh, invented. So ChatGPT uh, belongs to a family of pre-trained machine learning systems that use the transformer technology and the neural networks of the transformer technology as the deep learning model. Uh, as I've already mentioned, the transformer neural networks were first developed by Google in 2017 to primarily solve the problem of machine um, translation. Machine translation is, um, um, is uh, an especially difficult problem to solve because it requires the understanding of the whole context of the sentence, sometimes the phrase, and sometimes the document in order to arrive at, uh, at, a, at an accurate um, translation. And then very, very quickly, um, um, generative AI moved into other aspects, if you like, of, um, uh, of um, of our lives, uh, and it became the engine behind spectacular AI innovations 
that are better known as generative AI uh, applications. And this extended to uh, from generating code to generating video and generating also works of art uh, and, and also in addition to um, 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 conversational agent type uh, generative AI applications such as uh, chat uh, um, GPT. Okay, so um, our research into um, knowledge-based um, 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 NLP uh, um, um, uh, within this within the context of this research, the transformer neural network technology. The advantage of transformer neural networks is that it can learn the context of the word in a sentence over a longer distance and in a much efficient way. So it doesn't understand just the meaning of the word, but it also understands the context in which the word is, uh, is, um, uh, is, is, is uttered. Uh, so for example, I'll give you two examples here. So the first example sentence is, aren't you hungry for a Burger King now? And the second, Graham Smith yelled, not my king because he does not respect him. Now, the context is very important to understand the meaning or the semantics of the word king in either sentence. And the first, obviously, we mean a food or a burger. And in the second, the meaning is a monarch. And within the second, we also want to be able to attribute uh, the disrespect to king. And both uh, these operations, understanding the, um, the, the, the semantics and understanding the context in which, uh, in, in this case, particular sentiment was uttered is, 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 is important uh, uh, to, um, uh, to figure out using uh, neural networks. Now, the predecessor technology to, um, to transforming technology was uh, um, recurrent neural networks or RNN. And unlike recurrent neural networks, transforming technology can process words in parallel while maintaining their context. And this allows them to, to utilize high performance computing to train very large language models. So the fact that they can process words in parallel rather than, rather than sequentially, this means that you can assign chunks, if you like, of the sentence to uh, analyze the context to different processors and therefore parallel processing can be used in mass in order to uh, train uh, these uh, language classifiers on very large language models. And this is where the term large language model came from. Now, um, just to give you um, oh, uh, an idea of the size of data that we are um, uh, working with, with large language models, ChatGPT3 uses 175 billion hyperparameters, and this has exponentially increased uh, by thousandfolds to 170 trillion parameters uh, in ChatGPT4. However, these models, uh, um, despite the colossal amount of data, that they've been trained with, they've been trained on generic online text uh, that is freely available on the internet, on books, on articles of code, if we, are, if we are talking about text, and on images, videos that are available or code, if we are talking about the other type of unstructured data that is used to train these large language models. Now, the issue with large language models is that they can um, um, result in, despite the fact that they've been trained on this huge amount of data, they can generate inaccurate results. So for specific domains uh, or applications that require attention to uh, the specifics, the specific context of uh, the, the problem domain, they can generate inaccurate results. So uh, let's look at this study that was commissioned by Linklater's global law firm. And the, uh, within this study, uh, a large language model was asked to respond to two questions. The first question was about um, the general data protection regulation, GDPR, 
and the response to the question that uh, I want to keep records of orders from customers in order to send the goods and collect money, the response was excellent. The response was very good. And the um, uh, uh, the um, um, the um, 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 lawyers who analyzed the output were uh, very impressed with the output of the LLM of the LLM machine. A second question, though, uh, about a different regulation, which is uh, which was about the privacy and electronic marketing regulation, generated result that was not impressive to the um, um, to the um, uh, to the legal uh, advice um, professionals. So they only scored the second um, response two out of five. And they said that the answer was um, internally inconsistent and that it did not consider corporate subscribers. So the question that um, uh, we are trying to solve in our research is that can contextual knowledge or domain specific knowledge be used to improve the transformers model performance? And in order to answer this knowledge, I'm going to uh, this this question. I'm going to um, um, look at our research that um, 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 started to work with 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 context specific information or domain specific information prior to us um, moving into using that particular research to improve um, transformer models or transformer technology. Okay, so um, trip down the uh, memory lane. So this was uh, way back. Uh, this was our work with a Nottingham-based company called the Press Association Images. Actually, it was not called the Press Association uh, at the time. Uh, and our work here was uh, to help this particular company to improve the return of their search engine. Okay, so. Um, their problem was that they, they had a huge repository of images, and despite this huge repository of images that was identified by caption, the recall and the accuracy of the retained images as a result of their customers using their image search engine was less than um, um, satisfactory. And to us, it was immediately... Um, 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 it was immediately obvious that one way of improving the recall of the images search engine of the Press Association company, or MPIX, as it was known uh, at the time, was to make this search engine understand, if you like, the um, um, uh, context of the domain or understand the domain that these uh, images are trying to work with or describe. So we worked with the um, uh, knowledge owners uh, at MPIX to semantically model their domain knowledge. And we started, even though they, they, are, they, they work with several domains, we started with the sports domain. And the first step here was to um, analyze the domain and um, 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 give a structure, if you like, of this domain that describes the various concepts and relations that are relevant to this particular domain. Um, and this resulted in producing this knowledge map or this taxonomy that you see in front of you. And this is the knowledge map or taxonomy that you are going to use throughout the research to improve the way that we classify text, whether we use computational uh, linguistic techniques or whether we try to fuse these computational linguistic techniques with machine learning. Now, the second step uh, was to formalize um, um, this taxonomy into a formal ontology. And this ontology has the view of this graph. And the idea of, of a graph or a semantic graph is critical to uh, how uh, I'm going to describe this research going uh, forward. So the semantic graph consists of nodes each node uh, um, uh, corresponds to a concept, and the nodes are linked with these arcs, and the arc describe the relationship, if you like, between these two um, um, nodes. 
For example, as you can see in this graph, a player can be a member of a national team and a player can feature in a match. A match is played in a venue. Uh, uh, the venue can be a stadium and the stadium can have a location and this location is a city. So you can see that we are trying to capture the domain understanding or the context of the domain using this formal graph. And what you can do then is that you can use other uh, natural language processing techniques such as name interrecognition to associate uh, the text that you are trying to analyze with, these, with this specific graph or with nodes and arcs within this specific graph. So for example, this is an extract from a comment about um, a, a, a match between Argentina and Mexico in the previous World Cup. And here um, you can see that we can infer that Lionel Messi uh, and, and, and associate Lionel Messi with uh, the player concept, associate Argentina with the national team that he plays for, uh, associate the FIFA World Cup in the, uh, with the tournament that, uh, um, that this event is, is about and associate Lucille, if you like, with the, with the stadium in which the match was played. And, and then, you know, Lucille can be inferred that it's in Doha and that Doha is a city in Qatar. And what this association of the text with the uh, formal concepts allow you to do is that it allows you to use sophisticated um, query languages uh, such as Sparkle in order to formulate um, very, uh, if you like, um, complex uh, queries that at the time could not be um, answered, if you like, uh, directly by the query engine of, uh, of um, 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 MPEX or APA foods. For example, you can ask questions such as, you know, can you can you um, extract images of all players that scored both for Argentina and the Napoli Football Club? And the the code uh, that you see in front of you, or the query script, is what you can use um, um, and from there. And the results um, uh, as a result of that, um, 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 MPEX or uh, the press association improved, if you like, the way that uh, the search engine can interpret the, the query uh, that their clients present in the in the um, uh, in the um, um, in the um, uh, in their search engine. Okay. Now the success with this particular um, technology then uh, moved into um, other fields. Uh, the first was in transport modeling, where we use semantic graphs to build interchangeable models for activity-based travel demand generation. Likewise, in mineral exploration, where geospatial knowledge base was used to sort multimodal data, the text and geodata, uh, with reasoning uh, capabilities for prospectivity um, um, analysis. But perhaps the most relevant, uh, if you like, um, uh, uh, past research that is of, 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 uh, of relevance to today's talk is research that we did in the sentiment analysis of the movie um, domain. So what we did is that we tried to improve the uh, sentiment analysis uh, or the analysis of the sentiments that are expressed in movie reviews. And similar to what we did with the sports domain in the previous um, section, we um, modeled uh, the, uh, the movie domain um, um, into the um, uh, nodes and the arcs that you see um, um, in front of you. So a movie, for example, has a feature. This feature can be a performance. A movie can have an actress, uh, and then this was coupled also with um, the the um, uh, the review domain as well. So there was the movie domain, which 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 is the application domain, and also what we were what you were trying to do with the movie, which is to analyze the sentiments within the movie itself. So for the sentiments, we also created 
a semantic graph, and that semantic graph described, for example, the um, the opinion that the opinion uh, has can have a sentiment. Sentiment, for example, can be um, um, positive um, 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 or negative, uh, and also the review was giving a particular sentiment as well. Uh, and this basically allowed us to um, associate the sentiments that are expressed within um, a review with the features of this particular domain. Okay, and this allows the, allowed us to arrive at a more accurate aggregate uh, of the uh, of the um, of the sentiments expressed in a particular review, and and subsequently arrive at a more uh, accurate. Um, 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 evaluation, if you like, of the review's polarity. So, for example, here you can see that uh, there is a, um, um, a, a sentiment which is called excellent. Excellent describes movie, so we can take that into consideration because movie belongs to the, um, uh, uh, to the domain that we are trying to analyze. Likewise, good uh, is, 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 is used to describe script. Script, again, is something that we can take into account because it's relevant to the movie domain. Um, um, laughing, we cannot use that. Or large, we cannot use uh, large as a sentiment because it describes a feature that does not belong to our domain. Um, and also, this allows us to disambiguate uh, some um, um, uh, some features, for example, uh, in this particular example, we, we didn't know what Lily Terror is or who Lily Terror is, uh, uh, even though um, um, we wanted to analyze whether grade can be used in, the, in, in, in calculating the sentiment associated with, the, uh, with, the, with, with this particular feature. However, because we know that we are working with the movie domain, we went out and try and queried whether this particular um, 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 known um, um, term or, or named entity exists within the movie domain. And indeed, when we queried the, um, the addiction entry uh, in, in open link data, which is a structured uh, knowledge base, we found out that Lily Taylor indeed is an actor, and we can take the sentiment expressed against her uh, in our evaluation of the of the sentiment expressed in the um, in the um, in the uh, in this particular uh, uh, review. And then moving on from that, what we did is that we associated this kind of linguistic. Um, um, uh, consideration of the domain knowledge with machine learning. Okay, so in addition to the semantic features that we that 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 we just um, that we just uh, considered, we also added um, um, textual features, and these textual features were included in the model in the machine learning model that we that we combined with the uh, with the computational linguistic um, approach. And the results were very encouraging. Uh, 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 as you can see here, uh, the, um, the hybrid technique that, that, that includes both machine learning and, and, um, uh, and uh, computational linguistics considerably improved the accuracy of the classification. Okay. So um, returning to the main, um, 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 you know, focus of the of the presentation, which is uh, uh, how can we improve text uh, classification in general, uh, or how can we improve the text classification of large language models? The domain that we started to work with is the financial uh, is the financial domain, and the selected task for this financial domain was sentiment analysis. So we had a large number of um, uh, financial text, and within this financial text, we wanted to have an indication of the conditions for investment uh, 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 as expressed uh, in, in this particular financial text. Um, to the, the, the machine learning um, um, neural network that was used uh, within this task was BERT, 
or the bidirectional encoder representational from transformers. Okay, so this shows you uh, the um, schematic diagram of how uh, BERT works. And as I said before, unlike um, uh, uh, recurrent uh, neural networks, the, this particular architecture benefits from the parallel input sequence and the embedding generation. The main uh, two innovations that are used by transformers are embedding and attention. Embedding is the mapping of input text to a vector that represents the word's context, uh, which includes the meaning of the word uh, in the language, uh, as well as the position of the word in the sentence. And attention, the second innovation of transformer networks primarily computes the relationship between words in the sentence, uh, and therefore it is able to complement the contextual information by deciding which part of the word requires the focus within the class classification, uh, classification um, um, process. So uh, the embedding um, uh, of the uh, of the um, of the words uh, within uh, the process is is an extremely important um, 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 uh, or part of the uh, is an extremely important um, uh, scientific concept. Okay, so the uh, so what we. Okay, so the, the technology that we developed was called KG FinBird or the Knowledge Graph uh, Financial Bird. And it exploits the Bird transformers in order to perform financial opinion mining. To achieve this, it has to fuse two different types of embeddings. The first embedding is the embedding that is performed by the transformer technology. Um, in this case, BERT, and this, this embedding embeds, embeds, if you like, the or generates embedding for the input financial text that we uh, need to analyze. So this is the regular mapping uh, of the input financial text that is performed by the large language model. So this is what you get in the large language model box. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to fuse that with the uh, knowledge graph that has a specialist understanding of the financial knowledge domain. Okay, just to understand the context a little bit more, let me just go through this very quickly. So the transformer model, similar to BERT, understands the language by embedding sentences or, or sentence words from the training text. So you can see, for example, here in front of you, this is the embedding of the um, um, uh, footballer concept as it's performed by, by BERT. Okay, so the embedding is, is, um, is in the um, form of this um, uh, numerical vector. And you expect here that uh, words within this uh, two-dimensional embedding space that um, are closer uh, conceptually or contextually to each other, that they have similar kind of embedding. Now, what we want to do is that we want to extend this further uh, to infuse a higher order uh, domain knowledge as opposed to generic text. So rather than simply uh, the generic text on which the um, current lar lar large language models were uh, trained on, we want to um, use higher order domain knowledge, higher order understanding of the language or of the domain concept and infuse that with the general language understanding that is provided by the large language models. So we want to be able, for example, to um, um, interpret or better interpret the, the sentence that uh, um, uh, Captain Harry Kane scored for England. And in order to do that, we need to understand, as I've mentioned before, the uh, concepts and the relations that are relevant to the sports domain in general, or maybe to the football domain in, in, um, uh, 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 in particular. Now, 
um, embedding the knowledge graph um, um, can be um, um, uh, problematic because obviously we are not dealing with with flat sentences. We are dealing with vectors. We are dealing with a connected graph. Uh, in order to overcome this particular challenge, we use the node to vector, or we modify the node to vector technology in order to vectorize the knowledge graph to uh, flatten, if you like, the knowledge graph and transform it into uh, the embeddings that uh, are would be, if you like, expected by the transformer technology. So node to vector was used to perform a biased random walk through the nodes to capture the local and global structure, to capture the, the, uh, the structure, if you like, of the graph and give us kind of numerical representation of, uh, of, the, uh, of the knowledge graph. Okay, so this is uh, an illustration of the, how, that, how, uh, how that was done. Not going to go into the mathematics of it. So how do we build this this knowledge graph in the first place? Similar to what uh, um, uh, similar to what we did with the sports domain, so we start with the base um, 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 uh, ontology with the financial uh, ontology, and then we enrich this um, ontology with ground truth facts that were extracted from public data sources such as DBpedia and Investopedia, and because we are using this kind of formal structure where we are able to use again um, um, high level or sophisticated query languages in order to extract um, and domain relevant, if you like, facts from uh, these online um, 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 uh, data sets. Okay, so for example, using Sparkle, we managed to extract the names of over 1 million people that are related to the financial domain the name of um, over half million um, organizations that are extracted to the, to the financial domain and so on. Okay, so the, sec the, the following challenge was mapping the uh, knowledge graph embedding that we, that we um, uh, normalized using not to vector to the bare transformer uh, encoding. And the problem that we have is that not to vec produces the embedding, but the two embeddings, the uh, embedding produced by not to vec and the, uh, the embedding produced by Baird exist in two different uh, vector spaces. And we need to align these two vector spaces together. So uh, we used a, a technology that was developed by OpenAI, even though it was developed for a completely different purpose. It was developed to um, embed vector, um, uh, to embed um, image images uh, or to align the embedding of, vec of, of images to uh, the vector, vector embedding. So we modified this contrastive language image pre-training, which, which uh, allowed the uh, text, if you like, based model to be used to, um, 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 to train uh, or to understand the classification of, of images to uh, do a similar uh, job of um, 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 aligning uh, the, the two spaces, the, the space that is in, in, the, in, the, in the input text that we're trying to um, uh, classify and the knowledge model that is expressed in graph um, uh, or node-based um, uh, format. Okay, so this is the architecture the final architecture, which I've already talked about. And the ultimate aim here, really here, is, is, to, to, is to generate the sentiment label that indicate whether uh, the, uh, it is a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment, sentiment expressed within the uh, financial text, and then infer whether there are uh, the, the conditions, if you like, for investment, for example, are favorable or not. Uh, and this shows you the result of uh, our um, um, text classification or sentiment analysis technique. And you can see that uh, the text classification has considerably, if you like, improved uh, the, um, uh, the accuracy and the F score uh, of previous 
uh, models uh, while using uh, less or um, um, much reduced training uh, training data. And before I move to the conclusions, let me play this video that shows a different area uh, where uh, large language models that have been improved, if you like, with domain knowledge can, uh, uh, can produce benefit to, uh, to, to, to NLP uh, applications. I'm hoping that I'll be able to play it. Running an e-commerce business can be an uphill struggle. It's a guessing game to know what your visitors are looking for or work out why so many products get returned or why cart abandonment is so damn high. Competition isn't fair and life is hard. Are traditional chatbots able to solve some of these issues? Probably. But can we do better? Certainly. Certainly is a conversational commerce platform that enables you to create a digital twin of your best salesperson. Just like in a physical store, it proactively guides your visitors to the right section on your website, takes them to the right product, recommends relevant items, and helps everyone through checkout, even grandma. Learn what your visitors are looking for at that exact moment through conversations. No more guesswork. And, of course, certainly does all of this. And when building, certainly, we thought of everybody in e-commerce. Are you ready to change the conversation? Okay, so this was an example of a technology that uses um, knowledge-informed, if you like, um, uh, large language models to um, um, deliver um, um, uh, applications that of, of that level of sophistication. And uh, you will be able to find, for example, chatbots that uh, are now answering questions in, in, uh, in the field of um, um, legal advice, um, the, um, uh, in, in the field of healthcare and so on. So this is a very lucrative and promising, uh, if you like, area where the, the technology that fuses um, domain knowledge and, and, and transforming technology can uh, result in, 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 in highly sophisticated classification uh, models. Run. Okay, so let me just wrap up. Uh, the transformer technology have transformed uh, the application and innovation of NLP systems. Uh, I showed that uh, knowledge-based modeling can complement the power of pre-trained transformer systems by injecting focused human understanding in their machine learning cycle, and that the success in integrating knowledge graphs uh, in one of the transformer technologies of BERT input embedding with promising uh, application results uh, in the um, domain model of choice that we, that we chose to improve the BERT engine, which is financial text uh, analytics. And the video that I just played shows that the hybrid methodology is applicable to other domains and NLP ta tasks. I like to give credit to um, the um, student that co uh, co uh, collaborated with me in this work, uh, Jovin, uh, a graduate of MSc Data Science. At the time that we produced this work, he was working with Roche for his placement, and now he's a PhD student at the King's College London. Thank you very much. I think I'm on time. Okay. Thank you very much, Taha. Um, so we've got a couple of questions in the chat. If anybody else has any questions, if you want to type them in and we'll see. I stop we sharing the screen, Bev? Uh, it might be worth keeping it just in case you need to refer back okay, to well, any. Sure. Um, so questions then. Neil B has asked, why have you settled on semantic graphs as opposed to other techniques? Okay, because semantic graphs are uh, one of the, um, 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 if I understood the question correctly, because semantic graphs are one of the mature technologies that can formally capture the um, domain knowledge. And you are able to 
use existing tools, develop semantic graphs, and you're able to also automate the enrichment of these semantic graphs with data that you can capture from online sources. Uh, if 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 I'm uh, I'm not sure if I understood the 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 question correctly or not, but I when I when I gave this presentation uh, in um, in another conference, a question that was asked was was comparing semantic graphs with other techniques for improving the understanding of the of the uh, large language models of the prompt or the query. I'm not sure if that is the question that the um that was meant okay neil if you could just let us know whether that's um answered your question or not uh while you do that if if not then it can maybe get you to unmute and you can ask it in, in person um but while you while you mull over that answer I'll just move on to the next question which is from marwan he has asked, how are the keywords associated with the identified features or graph nodes? Is it done through training with labeled data? A very good question, actually. Uh, the, 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 the association of features to, to sentiments is done um, uh, initially by um, um, using existing knowledge. So initially by, by, by talking to the knowledge owners so you, you try to build that, you, you, you already have uh, existing knowledge about how the domain works, so you, you do that. Uh, but then you, all, you can also use machine learning techniques, right, in order to, to get the most frequent words that are associated with, this, with, with a particular feature. And this is how you can, you can, you can, you can improve the, um, the, um, the lexicon uh, of associating um, uh, the the um, the features with the with the sentiments. Does okay. that answer your question, Marwan? You've got a thumbs up. Okay. And Neil says yes, you did answer his question. But um, David Bauer has followed up that uh, question, asking how does semantic graph compare to RAG techniques. Or does semantic graph provide one possible technique to obtain the data that will augment the query? Excellent question, and this is and this is what I was referring to earlier. So retrieval augmented generation is is a technique that um, is used whereby instead of the fine tuning of the large language model, which which is what we we did with the with the semantic graph you simply provide um, additional context within the, the, the query window itself. Now, this has two limitations. The first limitation is that you are limited by the size of the prompt that you can, that you can provide to the actual, um, uh, to the actual query for the, for the uh, large language model. So that this is, this is the first one. And the, and, and the second one is that it's, it, it, you have to do it each time you query the, the large language model. While with, with our technique, with the semantic graph technique, you try to um, rely on our understanding of the domain to capture as much contextual information uh, as possible. And you provide that to, uh, um, 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 in, in a pre-training cycle and, and the model um, continues to classify on the fly, on the spot. Thank you. I think we've got um, one last technical question and then a, a probably a more straightforward question at the end. Um, so Jack is asking, how does the hybrid approach scale? Because they've used knowledge graphs as data sources for users to query with and have noticed response times don't scale well with the size of the data being queried. Um, have you used knowledge graphs uh, in the in the pre-training, or have you used knowledge graphs uh, in the in the in the, at the query stage? Because if you use knowledge graphs in the um, um, for 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 sorry in in the in the in, in the fine tuning, if you if you use knowledge graphs for the for the fine tuning stage, it is time consuming, but you do it only once. So you kind of regenerate the model. Uh, so it's it's a one-off, um, 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 if you like, um, 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 process. 
and then you can update it offline and continue to reuse the model again. Okay, does that answer your question, Jack? Um, okay, uh, so another question. Yes, Jack saying yes. Um, so David said another one more quick question. I think it's the last one. I'll only take a few couple of seconds. Um, is there some sort of term, some sort of analysis, e.g., in terms of cost of further training the model, which will take a fair amount of one-off processing and then lesser per query resource? versus RAG on a per query basis, uh, i.e. no additional uh, oh, that thing, no, 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 and LLM training saving that big chunk of processing, but per query vector-based querying to provide additional augmentation to each query, i.e. is there a break-even point? I don't think I did a great job of reading that out, so I apologise for that. I hope you've understood the question, Tar. I understood the question. It's an interesting question, and this 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 is something that we have included uh, in our yet to publish paper. So who asked that question? Uh, David Bauer. David, can you can you get in touch with me, please? Because this is in our plans for, for further work. We have not uh, um, uh, embarked on such analysis <laughs> simply because the results were, were, were good. So the results that we, we, we achieved uh, were, were, were excellent. Uh, however, for um, different applications, for more data intensive applications, the results might be might be different. And in our plans for further work, we want to have a direct comparison between this particular techniques and the retrieval augmented generation or rack techniques. Because in even the rack techniques, since we last played with them, uh, this work is now um, uh, almost one year old, have improved. Uh, so, so, so there is a lot to look into there. This is an excellent question, and if you are working in this area, it would be it would be great to 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 discuss it with you offline and see if you are even interested in uh, in joining that effort in 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 further exploring, if you like, um, uh, the uh, the comparison between semantic graph powered um, um, fine tuning and 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 rag. Uh, based um, uh, uh, prompt engineering. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, David says he'll, he'll try and find you on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, if not, if you want to get in touch with me at the chair email address, and I can uh, I can pass it on. Um, okay, so final question then. Say so quite an easy question from Sandeep is: Is it possible to get a copy of the slides? Are you happy for the slides to be sent out? Okay, yeah. So if if you want to send the slides to me, Taha, and then I'll get HQ to to um, send them out to the uh, um, people who signed up. The video, which I did start recording slightly late, so I apologise for that, uh, will be available on our uh, on the BCS YouTube channel uh, in the next couple of weeks, or so as well. Okay. okay. So if we can all um, thank Taha then for his, uh, his interesting talk. We can find where they've hidden reactions in, uh, in this. There we go. Um, and yeah, so, so thank, you for, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the talk, Taha. So those in the audience, um, if you do want to get more involved in the BCS uh, Nottingham and Derby branch, do drop me an email, um, but otherwise we'll hope to see you at future events anyway. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much.